Hey kids, it's Mr and Mrs Messenden Flower here, hope you're well. Out and about today on the bike with the Mrs on the back, hopefully uh, you can see her perch there. Because I thought it might be interesting to give those of you that have never ridden uh, with a passenger on a motorcycle before a bit of insight about what's involved. So if you're interested in riding with a pillion passenger, stick around and stay tuned. Okay, so there are a few things to know about riding with a passenger on the motorcycle. There's no need to be afraid of doing so. It's great fun to share your hobby with somebody. Uh, what I'll do in this video is I'll talk you through the basic things that you need to uh, consider as far as the motorcycle is concerned. And then uh, me and Mrs. Fly will give you our individual hints and tips, both as a rider and as a passenger, uh, about the things that you need to uh, concern yourself with if you're going to go riding two up. So stick around and stay tuned. We'll head back home, we'll get off the bike and we'll uh, talk through that stuff. Okay, so we're back at base now and uh, I'll take you through the points that I think are important things to consider uh, if you're going to take a pillion on the bike, or a pillion passenger I should say. Uh, Carol here, my beautiful assistant, is going to help me out with this section of the video. Uh, and uh, I've written down, I sort of, we scratched our heads and wrote down the things that we think are the most important things. So if I can have the list please, beautiful assistant, thank you. These are in no particular order. But the first thing, uh, of course, that you've got to remember when you're going to go riding with a passenger is to set the bike up. So uh, we need to put the pillion pegs down, don't we Carol? There we go. There we go, so pillion pegs down. And uh, in your particular, depends on your bike, but you might also want to wind on a bit of uh, suspension preload as well to cater for the extra weight. Or you might have a fancy electronic bike that does that for you on the fly, like the big BMW GS does. Okay, next thing to consider is how uh, your uh, passenger is going to get on and off the machine, because there is a bit of an art to this. The idea is you don't want the bike obviously to move around too much, because obviously the, the rider's having to hold the bike up. So first thing I do is put the side stand down. Uh, I then give Carol the thumbs up that it's okay to get on. Uh, and then what she usually does is puts one leg on the, on the passenger pedal, um, kicks the leg over, stands upright, and then sits down in a fairly prompt movement, don't you? Try to. The idea being, not to wriggle around and you want to make that whole procedure as quick as you can because the poor old rider is holding the bike up however I did say put the stand down so if there is a mishap hopefully the bike will just go on the stand but um, depending on how far your bike leans over depends whether you can actually leave the stand down or not when the person gets on Okay, the next thing to consider if you're going to go riding uh, two up is how are you going to communicate on the bike? Now, you can get yourself one of those fancy expensive intercoms. I personally don't like them very much. So we tend to use uh, a hand signal system, uh, which is very simple. Basically, tap on the shoulder means that uh, you've got something to say, yes? Yep. And then um, either she'll shout in my ear if it's something urgent, and you can hear each other, can't you, on yep. the bike, but you do have to shout. Or when we come to a stop at a junction or whatever, we usually have a little bit of a conflab, don't we? To just, to yep. just check in to make sure that everything's yep. okay. But you might want to develop your own sort of hand signal method or whatever it's thumbs up or thumbs yeah. down seems to work for us anything yeah. to add no nope. there you go yeah. Okay, the next thing to consider, of course, is uh, protection for your passenger. You might have all the latest and greatest biking kit, but uh, your passenger, presumably, is just as important as you. So you've got to make sure that they've got the right biking kit as well. So um, obviously comfort and uh, fit is important, but also obviously levels of protection. So I didn't scrimp, for example. Here we've got uh, Carol getting togged up to get on the bike. She uses an RA Tour X4, which is exactly the same helmet as I use, for example, because I think her head is just as precious, if not more precious than my own. So make sure your passenger has the right kit just as much as you do. Okay, another thing you need to consider before you embark on riding with a passenger on the back of the bike is how is it going to affect the handling on the bike because the bike will feel different. Now, there are a few things here to uh, remember. So I made a note, so I'll ask my beautiful assistant to keep hand this. Thank you. And these are in no particular uh, order, by the way. The first thing that I noted here is consider your braking distance. It is going to be a little bit further. You're going to want to brake smoother uh, because nobody wants sudden braking. Um, so you're going to need to plan that a bit more in advance, particularly if it's wet, your braking distance will be even further in the wet, of course. And the other thing is acceleration is likely to not be as good on the bike so um, you need to plan your overtakes maybe let the passenger know if you're about to overtake you don't like a shocking bit of acceleration no. do you so uh, let them know if you're about to uh, overtake and be, be aware that the acceleration may be a little bit less uh, the other thing I noted here was um, the steering may feel a little bit vague again a bit of extra weight on the back I'm not saying Carol's heavy by any means but it does make the bike pitch slightly differently so they'll be a little bit lighter on the front end so the steering might feel a little bit different to what you're used to particularly on lighter bikes than maybe the big gs and then uh, last but not least uh, the thing i noted here was be aware of fork dive now again the gs doesn't suffer from this because it has a funny bmw telelever front end and the forks don't dive but on some other bikes particularly smaller lighter ones when you brake with somebody on the back with all that extra weight the front can dive down just be aware of that 
Okay, another thing to be aware of when you're about to ride with a passenger for the first time on the bike, it seems an obvious point, but of course the bike is a lot heavier, so you need to take particular care when you stop the bike. So when you come up to a junction, for example, just brace yourself. The passenger might wriggle around a bit at that point. Just be aware that it's going to be harder to balance the bike. Another time uh, to be aware of that is if you can do any complicated manoeuvres like, uh, I know you want to turn the bike around or you're going to park the bike or whatever, you might just want to ask the passenger to get off before you embark upon that complicated mover, uh, manoeuvre. All right, next point I've forgotten. So can I have a little prompter, please, my beautiful assistant? Thank you very much. Uh, the next thing, and again, this is a sort of an obvious point I've written here, is uh, that powerful bikes are better uh, for shifting pillions. If you've got a 50cc scooter, you can, of course, ride with a pillion. In fact, we've done it. Haven't we? We've been on, on holiday, as everybody does. Many years ago. Yeah, we've taken... We we've, young. we've been on scooters uh, and ridden low power bikes. It is possible, but there's no doubt a big powerful bike like the big old BMW GS is great for riding with a pillion from the rider's point of view and indeed from the passenger, would you agree? Yeah, much better. Something else to consider doing before you get set off for a ride with a passenger on the back, particularly, and in fact, in particular, if it's the first time they've ever been on a bike, is just to brief them a bit on what to expect. So uh, the way that the acceleration of a bike is in general much brisker than a car. Uh, the fact that uh, when you brake, you do move forward a bit and your, your crash helmets may bump each other, that sort of thing. Just let them know what to expect so those things don't come, there's too much of a shock. Okay, so the theory is all well and good, but uh, once you've ridden uh, as a passenger and as a rider with a passenger for a while, what sort of advice would those sort of people give? Um, give? Well, we've, I've ridden with a passenger quite a bit, and Carol's been a passenger, so let's give you our top tips that I found as a rider that I would give to a passenger, and uh, Carol's found as a passenger she would give to a rider. So Carol, what advice would you give to a rider of a motorcycle who's taken a passenger for the first time? Okay, uh, ride as smoothly as possible. Think of your uh, passenger as a bowl of water um, and that you, they're precious cargo and you mustn't spill a drop. So you accelerate and brake and gear change as smoothly as possible. Um, it also helps to build their confidence that it's not very jerky on the bike. Um, don't be attempt um, tempted to show off. Again, it's part of that, as smooth as possible. You don't want to put your passenger off. Uh, yeah, now is not the time to be a GP rider, is it? No, definitely not. Um, a check to see the passenger is okay every so often by using your intercom or hand signals or go on a short ride, build up their confidence, go around the block, stop, see what they like, what they don't like. Um, show them well uh, where the hand grips are so that they can hold on, which is I find really useful to brace yourself if you do have to brake a bit quicker or acceleration. Or say it's okay to hold on to you as the rider uh, and show them where you want them to hold on. Personally, I don't like to hold on to Mr. Flyer, I prefer the hand grips. Um, only ride with, for the pillion, the passenger, sorry, only ride with people you really trust. That um, So I've only ridden with two people, three people actually, that I trusted. Um, I think that's about it, really. All right, thank you very much. So, what about me as a rider then? What advice would I give to passengers? Well, again, I had to write these down, uh, so I'll have the magic list. Right, first thing, and this is really important, and Carol's quite good at this actually, but my first thing is don't wriggle around because uh, it's absolutely fine riding with somebody on the back. You don't really know they're there once you're moving unless they keep shifting their weight around, and that becomes a right nuisance. So do not wriggle around is my first point. Uh, next one is only get on and off the bike when the rider tells you to do so. It might look like they've stopped and they're relaxed and happy for you to jump off, but they might be uh, thinking about something else or doing something else. So just wait until the rider tells you that you can get on and off and then they'll be braced for you to do so. Uh, next thing, don't lean against the bike. Just go with the bike. Concentrate on keeping your body uh, in line with the rider's body. That way uh, you won't sort of be trying to steer the bike without the rider knowing. There's nothing worse than that as a rider having somebody trying to lean into the corners. Uh, try to be aware of what's going on around you so that if, for example, there is an overtake about to happen, you can maybe grip on a bit harder. Or if you can see a line of traffic ahead, uh, it's obvious the bike is going to slow down. Brace yourself for some braking. Uh, and there were a couple of other points here. Never put your feet down uh, unless you're getting on and off the bike. So when you come to a stop at traffic lights or in a traffic queue or whatever, let the rider put his feet down. You never do that yourself because again, that just upsets the bike. And then uh, last but not least, don't expect to take a lot of luggage. <laughs> okay, so riding a motorbike is a great hobby and for many of us, it's a passion. So much better if you can share that passion with your loved ones. So uh, if you want to give it a try, don't be afraid to do so. It's actually not that difficult. Just take it in small steps like we've described uh, and you should find you'll have a great time and hopefully there'll be many years of happy motorcycling together ahead of you. Do you agree? Yeah.
Excellent. OK, so I hope you've enjoyed that. If you are a seasoned motorcycler and you've taken somebody uh, on the back... Motorcycler? Motorcyclist is the usual term, isn't it? And you've taken somebody on the back of the bike on a number of times then uh, and you think we've forgotten anything, then do stick in the comments below uh, any further advice you've got for new people that maybe haven't ever done it and uh, might be a bit afraid of the prospect. All right, that's it for this time. I uh, look forward to speaking to you again soon. Uh, until next time, this has been Mr and Mrs Fly. Cheerio. Bye. The next thing you've got to consider if you're going to ride with the passenger is how you're going to communicate on the bike. Now, some people use an intercom. I personally don't choose to do that. I've got nothing against them in particular, but it's just another gadget, and I don't particularly want to be charging something else up, etc. And, you know, I like to. Biking for me is a solitary thing, even if. Let's do that again, because that doesn't make any sense, is it? Communicating. I'd stay away from the. You don't want to listen to your missus. Just say we tend to use hand okay. signals. Okay. <laughs> is don't forget to put the passenger pegs down. Could you put the passenger pegs down for me, please, Carl? No. Well, it'd be better if you could do it this side so we could see it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and look, it's already, already down. down. I did it earlier. So there we go. That's what we made earlier, Blue Peter style. Like slow speed man maneuvers or whatever, say at a car park or indeed at a junction. Um, you might want to get, actually, not at a junction, that's rubbish. Let's do it again. Take two. Another thing to consider, and this is uh, not just you as a new rider. Uh, let's do that again. So, Carol, what advice would you give to a rider? Uh, no, what, yeah, let's do it again.